This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial introduces inheritance using a class diagram. Class diagrams are diagrams that are used to design and document object-oriented systems. The basic unit in a class diagram is a class. Each box here is a class. We see in this diagram that we have four boxes on the bottom, one central one, and one at the top. Six different classes. And a class diagram shows the structural relationships between a set or group of related classes. This tutorial is the first of three and this these classes will be looked at in their code in tutorials two and three but right now we're looking at their structural relationship. Each box has three compartments. The top compartment is for the name of the class. This class right here is boat. The second compartment is for the attributes or also known as the fields or data members of the class. And the third compartment is for the operations also known as the functions or methods of the class. The name, the fields, and the functions. Each class, three compartments. This class at the top here we're not detailing out. We're only showing the name. It's only important to show the level of detail that will be useful in a class diagram. Sometimes less is more. The arrows here with the open triangular uh, head represent the inheritance relationship. Notice that the boat is inheriting from object and down here we have a canoe, a motorboat, a rowboat, and a sailboat, all four of which inherit from boat. Object is at the top of the Java class library. All Java classes automatically inherit from object. We're focused, however, in this tutorial on this boat class hierarchy. The inheritance relationship which involves two classes being related, the class where the open arrow is is referred to as the parent class and the other class the child class. Synonyms for this, the parent is also known as the base and the child as the derived class, or the parent as the superclass, and the child as the subclass. The inheritance relationship is frequently uh, summarized as the is a, is a relationship, because a canoe is a boat, a motorboat is a boat, a rowboat is a boat. A sailboat is a boat. The child can stand in for the parent fully doing whatever the parent can do but also perhaps a little differently or also maybe doing new things the parent cannot do. In the class diagram to the left of every member is a symbol which indicates its access. The plus signs are public access, the minus signs are private access, and this pound sign at the top up here is protected access. The children classes such as these specialized boats down here on the bottom, they inherit all the members of the parent. They're all present, however, the only ones that will be directly available to them are those that are declared public or protected in the parent. The private 
elements, the private data members or fields, will be available in the child classes, but they can only be accessed through getters or setters that are public in the parent. Private functions in the parent are not inherited by the ch children. There's theoretically any class could be used as a parent class. Someone could come along and say, hmm, I like some of that functionality. I will derive from that. I'll create a child class based on that so I can reuse that functionality because one of the key things with inheritance is reuse. Since this, these fields in code are available in the children, you don't have to recreate all that or duplicate it, you reuse it. As I mentioned, the child classes can add their own fields, they can add their own new functions, and they can also specialize or change the behavior of a parent function by having a function with the exact same name and parameter signature. This is called an override. We'll look at that when we zoom in on this diagram. But keep in mind that although any class can be used as a parent class, in practice, although that's the theory, in practice, since inheritance is more complex and there are more possibilities for subtle errors and more uh, dependencies have been introduced, there's a coupling that occurs between the child and the parent. If the parent is changed, it could affect the child. Functions that it was relying on might be disappear or be changed. So it, it really needs to be planned out in practice and controlled. And you need to work with a group of classes that you do have some control over and consider group cohesion. Let's now zoom in on this. Well, first we'll switch back to the tool used to create this. This is Enterprise Architect. And we see here a window showing part of our class diagram over on the lower right here. This viewing window can be panned around to look at different sections of your hierarchy. Up in the upper right here is just a tree list. For example, the boat class here, if you click the plus sign, you can see all the members in there, the fields, the functions. So that's another way to look around through your class hierarchy. Let's look here at the the boat class, <clears throat> the boat is a basic boat. We're not going to go into very much details on it in this tutorial. Uh, we'll do that in the next tutorial. We're mainly focused on the class diagram, but it's a very basic boat, essentially a hull, just the part of the boat that floats. That's what these data members up here are. The material for the hull is wood by default, the depth, the length, and the width of the hull. And down here, the child classes introduce some new fields or they override functions. The primary functions that are overridden are the function to display the specifications of the boat, to draw a side view of the boat, to draw a top view of the boat, and the two string function, which actually gets inherited all the way down from object. For example, down here, canoe introduces paddles, number of paddles. A motorboat introduces its horsepower for its motor. A rowboat, a number of oars. And a sailboat, the height of the mask. And each of these child classes overrides the parent functions, display spec, draw side view, draw top view, and two string. 
because that's necessary. That specialized behavior is expected. But they reuse all of these fields and these other getters and setters from the parent class. So that's a powerful reuse there. Let's zoom in to have a better look at this. Here we've zoomed in on the boat class. Notice it has two constructors. One that simply takes the name as a string. And the other that takes the name and the dimensions for the hull. If we look down at the canoe, for example, it has those same constructor signatures but with the canoe class name because constructors are not inherited. We'll see in the next tutorial how the child constructors will make use of the parent constructors because they both need to come into play. Switching back to the big view, it's important to understand that the purpose here of these class diagrams is to provide a visual big picture view of your classes. It gives you a mental model that you can have in your, in your thoughts and, and you have a better conceptual understanding of your code. If you're just looking at the code itself and these various classes which are in different files, you can easily lose sight of the forest for the trees, as they say. So it's, it gives you a, a good grip on the code to have a visualization of it. And that's why also when you want to first understand some code, if there is a class diagram available, that's a good starting place to understand it. Now that we've seen that we have a, a boat base, base class with four derived classes, a canoe, motorboat, rowboat, and sailboat, we're in a much better position in our next tutorial, tutorial number two of this series of three, to look at the base class in more detail, and then in the third tutorial to look at the child classes in more detail.